Good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 earnings call of Wipro Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Aparna Iyer, Vice President and Corporate Treasurer. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Margaret. Warm welcome to our Q422 earnings call. We will begin the call with business highlights and overview by Thierry Delaporte, our Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, followed by a brief overview on our latest acquisition rising by Rajan Kohli, Managing Partner IDR's business line, and then a financial overview by our CFO, Jatin Delat. We also have with us, as a part of the management, Stephanie Trotman, our Chief Growth Officer, and Saurabh Govil, our C Chief Human Resources Officer. After the initial comments from the management, the operator will open the bridge for Q&A. Before theory starts, let me draw your attention to the fact that during the call, we may make certain forward-looking statements within the meaning of the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act 1995. These statements are based on management's current expectations and are associated with uncertainties and risks, which may cause the actual results to differ materially from those expected. The uncertainties and risk factors are explained in our detailed filings with ACC. Wipro does not undertake any obligation to update the forward-looking statements to reflect the events and circumstances after the date of filing. The conference call will be archived and a transcript will be made available on our website. Over to you, Thierry. Thank you, Aparna. And good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. To those of you joining us from the U.S., good afternoon. Friday are often known to bring good news, so today is no different, at least for us. In my opening remarks, um, I'll sum up the year that has gone by. I'll elaborate on the demand environment, provide details on sectors, markets, service offerings, and share a business outlook for the quarter ahead. I'll start by uh, analyzing that we've had an outstanding year. We delivered revenues of $10.4 billion at an industry leading growth of 27% plus in constant currency terms. Let's say crossing $10 billion of revenue is a significant landmark for us, and we are now aiming higher. Revenue growth has been our fastest ever in absolute terms. We've added one-fourth of our revenue just this year. Our order bookings in annual contract value terms grew 30% year-on-year, and we are finishing off the year with the highest ever pipeline. Through the year, we've made significant investments, both organic and inorganic, in strengthening our solutions, our go-to-market, the leadership team, as well as the broader talent pool. We have added over 45,000 new employees on a net basis, which is also the highest ever. We also continue to invest in our internal transformation. We know this will bring agility into our processes and help us serve our customers better. Operationally, we delivered 17.7% operating margins, which is ahead of our stated range. Finally, our net income in absolute terms is the highest ever, which grew by over 13% year on year and EPS expanded by 17% year-on-year. No doubt, it has taken a tremendous amount of discipline and determination to remain resolute in our pursuit of growth and execution excellence. I'm proud of what we've been able to achieve. Now, on to our Q4 performance and the demand environment. Our revenue growth during the quarter was at 3.1% in constant currency terms, and 28.5% year-on-year. 
look at it, we've been consistently growing at or over 3% for six quarters now. Our growth continues to be broad-based across all our key markets, service offerings, and in most of our sectors. During the quarter, we had a net addition of over 11,000 colleagues, which sets us up well for future growth. Business environment itself is still very good. The demand of, for IT services is strong, propelling our business forward. This is reflected in the state of our pipeline, our order bookings, and our overall growth rates. In fact, look at the order book. This quarter has grown 38% year-on-year in terms of annual contract value. Continue to close large transformation deals and see rapid expansion in small and mid-sized deals as well. This represents growth in our existing accounts as well as the expansion of our market portfolios. Calling Notable is the pivot to high growth services as we help our clients transform and digitize their businesses. We've had significant wins that put design at the center of the experience and combines our ICOR and ID's capabilities to reimagine IT, to imagine back office and customer experiences. There's continued focus on our hyperscale partners. This will not only help us win more in the market together, but it's also providing the alignment and investments we need to scale talent, assets, and industry solutions for the future. For example, <clears throat> our industry alignment with Microsoft has strengthened our partnership dramatically. We work closely with Microsoft to define and take to market solutions that are focused on established priority scenarios that align with Microsoft industry cloud vision. We've chosen to prioritize BFSI, retail, and energy and utilities where we will have a sharper focus. Ultimately, delivering faster time to value, rapid digital transformation, and a simplified Microsoft customer relationship, of course. A similar approach with ServiceNow has led to Wipro being recognized in their partner maturity index at the far upper right end of the quadrant. In the joint industry solution space, we continue to explore areas that combine novel, first of its kind solutions with broad industry leading partners or coalitions to create innovative, impactful platforms. A great example of this is the cloud car platform for software-defined vehicles, which we announced earlier this year at the Mobile World Congress. And there we've brought together WePros for Stride cloud services and engineering capabilities with more than 40 different partners to deliver an integrated cloud-native solution. This is helping automakers innovate faster and at a lower cost, while keeping software-defined vehicles digitally relevant for years to come, but decoupling previously integrated software and hardware. Our full stride cloud services has had an impressive year since its launch in June 2021. Our cloud ecosystem revenues also grew at an accelerated pace of over 31% in the fiscal year 22. On the M&A front, we have continued to pursue strategic fits pretty aggressively. A more recent acquisition, in particular Capco, which we are celebrating today, you know, the first anniversary of the acquisition, performing very well. We're very pleased to report that Capco has had a very healthy WDG growth this year. They're ahead of plan. And together, we have had over 60 synergy wins across markets. Most of you will know we've announced also two more acquisitions in the last few days. The first one is Convergence Acceleration Solutions, or CAS Group. They are a U.S.-based consulting and program management company focusing on the communication sectors. They specialize in driving large-scale business and technology transformation. 
cast groups, um, deep client relationships, and strong domain expertise, combined with Wipro's um, execution capabilities, will deliver an end-to-end -end professional services solution, but also immediate impact on clients. We can now provide our clients with services ranging from strategy development and planning to execution and implementation. The loan acquisition that we announced just earlier this week is rising, a global SAP consulting firm. One of the leading strategic partners in the world for SAP, Rising will become a very critical extension of Wipro's SAP cloud practice and Wipro full stride cloud services. Ajahn Cody is on the call today. He will share more details on the deal. To the operating margins now, we delivered profitability of 17% in Q4, adjusted for Capco, our largest acquisition. This will be well above the pre-pandemic margin levels. <clears throat> I will now provide some finer details on markets, service offerings, and sectors. All our markets grew double digit, but the Americas and Europe, our top two markets, grew at 28% and 36% year on year, respectively, in Q4 and 26% and 39% year-on-year in FY22. Let's look at the different uh, market units. In America as one, we grew 22% year-on-year in Q4, with all sectors showing strong growth. For the full year, we grew 21% year-on-year. Communications, media, and information services grew 28%. Consumer goods and life science grew 26%. Healthcare and medical devices grew 17%. While technology products and platform actually grew 34% year on year in the quarter. In Americas too now, we grew 34% year on year in Q4 and 30% in FY22. Here also there was broad based double digit growth across all sectors in the quarter. The order book, in terms of annual contract value, grew over 56% year-on-year in Q4. Now, let's look at Europe. A European business has delivered an outstanding year-on-year -year growth of 36% in Q4 and 39% for the full year. Germany, now Southern Europe, have grown over one and a half times in size. Benelux grew 23%, and our UK business grew 39% year-on-year. Finally, our apnea market grew at 14% year-on-year in Q4 and 9% in the year 22. Australia, New Zealand, and Southeast Asia are growing in double digits year-on-year -year for the quarter as well. The order booking, again in annual contract value terms, are looking healthy with 22% year-on-year growth. So remember, customer relationships remain top priority. Our top five customers grew 35% year-on-year. Our top 10 customers grew 34% year-on-year. In the last 12 months, we have added eight customers in the more than 100 million bracket and 10 customers in the more than 50 million bracket. Now, <clears throat> from a service offering standpoint, our IDs global business line grew 39% year-on-year in Q4 and 35% in FY22. Most of the sub-practices showed a healthy double-digit year-on-year growth, led by domain and consulting, which literally tripled in size. The engineering services business grew 26% year-on-year in Q4, which is a compounded quarterly growth rate of 6% over the last four quarters. Now, ICOR, our ICOR global business line grew by 15% year-on-year in Q4 and 17% in FY22. Most, most sub-practices grew in double digits on a year-on-year -year basis too. Digital operations and platform led the growth with 18% year-on-year -year for the full year. 
Oh, the kind of deals we are winning are very promising. For example, the global on-demand education platform has selected Design It as its campaign and media strategy partner. Design It will help them with new ways of engaging on its digital channels to deepen brand recognition in global markets. Another interesting example is with a leading U.S.-based food service distributor. They selected Wipro as a strategic partner to drive profitable market share anchored on omni-channel initiatives, the next generation service platform, and best-in-class insight and analytics. Some more examples worth sharing, but I'd like to now focus on talent and our go-to-market strategy. It is to report that in line with what I had shared with you last quarter, our quarterly annualized attrition rate has moderated by 50, 500 basis points. We doubled our fresher intake for FY22 when compared to the previous year, and our plan is to double this in FY23 as well. Further, we have decided to increase the frequency of promotion cycles for 70% of our colleagues in junior bands to now a quarterly basis. No doubt, leadership of a site is now deeper. The presence of senior leadership in locations outside India has improved by 16 basis points, a percentage points. It's also relevant to note that nearly 50% of our leadership hires have been in the growth office and in the customer facing global account executive roles. This means we are strengthening our front lines and sales teams. For the last 21 months, we have improved ethnic diversity in our senior leadership by 24 percentage points, and gender diversity in the leadership has nearly doubled. I'm proud of this, and we will continue to build a more inclusive workforce in the coming years. We have always, and we continue to do business responsibly. In particular, humanitarian crisis in Europe has had our attention. While we don't have any material exposure in the affected regions, many of our employees in the neighboring countries, Romania, Poland, have personally joined relief efforts providing food and shelter for thousands of displaced people. Our employees in Romania are volunteering to manage a dedicated helpline to support those in need. We've also created an employee donation program and matching it to the dollar, doubling the available funds. We have also partnered with Project HOPE, their emergency response team, and European partners are providing critical medical supplies, but also assistance to refugees. I can confirm that WIPRO will always stand by the principles of democracy, justice, and equality. Before I close, a word on our outlook for the next quarter. We have guided for revenue growth of 1 to 3%, which will translate to growth of, to growth of 16 to 18% on a year-on-year -year basis in constant currency. Now, while we don't provide an annual guidance, I want to confirm that we expect to grow in double digit for FY23 as well. On margins, for the medium term, we hold the 17, 17.5% band. However, for the next two to three quarters, we will see slightly lower margins. This is because of the investments we have made that I spoke to you about earlier. Summary. We are pleased with the current business momentum and very optimistic of further strengthening it going into the new financial year. All our key markets are growing on a year-on-year -year basis, and that is the solid foundation we are starting FY23 on. On that note, let me now Welcome Rajan, Rajan Kohli, who will provide more details on our latest acquisitions of Rising. Rajan? Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. It's my pleasure to say a few words about our acquisition of Rising. 
SAP is the market leader in ERP, supply chain management, and human capital management. It is growing rapidly due to increased cloud adoption and the post pandemic economic recovery. Meanwhile, Rise with SAP, a comprehensive cloud ERP offering, is gaining traction as it helps companies develop new cloud based business models to fuel their growth and transformation. Given this deep and broad growth profile for SAP, this is strategically important acquisition for four reasons. One, this presents complementary capabilities. Rising deep industry expertise in SAP enterprise asset management, human capital management, and SAP for consumer industries positions them as a sought after advisor of clients' complex SAP transformations. This offers cross sell opportunities into our client base, as well as upsell to lead with consultants. Two, com complementary customers in industry where we have strong presence. Rising enhances our existing position of strength and leadership in industries such as oil and gas, utilities, manufacturing, retail, fashion, and consumer with their own roster of complementary Fortune 2000 customers. Three, rising offers us local presence across strategically important geographies, US, Canada, Australia, and Germany, with over 1,300 experienced SAP consultants in 16 countries. As you know, on-site presence is even more important when we lead with functional consultants. Four, Rising's strong SAP process consulting expertise will advance Zipper's capability, while at the same time, Zipper's broader consulting and digital transformation capability will give Rising's clients access to a complete portfolio of services. The joining of Rising with Zipper could not be better timed given the growth we have seen in the SAP market and the opportunity to support clients in their transformation to become agile and intelligent enterprises. I will now like to hand over to Jatin Dalal, our CFO, for financial highlights of the quarter. Over to you, Jatin. Thank you, Rajan, and I will quickly cover the financial highlights. We had an excellent year. We grew 27.3% in reported terms, 28.5% in constant currency terms. Delivered 17.7% in operating margin. At 19% ETR, which resulted in a industry leading EPS growth of 17%. We delivered and converted consistent cash flows. Our operating cash flow as percentage of net income was 91%. Our free cash flow as percentage of net income was 75%. We had after paying dividend that we declared in March and $4.6 billion of cash gross of debt and $2.6 billion of cash net of debt as of 31st of March. We have $3.5 billion of forex hedges as on 31st of March and we delivered 75.91 as a realization rate in quarter four. We have guided for quarter one at 16 to 18% year-on-year growth as guidance, which converts in sequential terms to 1% to 3%. We'll be very happy to take your questions from here. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. The first question is from the line of Kumar Rakesh from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening everyone and thank you for taking my question. My first question was regarding the, the recent acquisition of Rising which you did. Thank you for the detailed explanation around that. Uh, what I wanted to understand that was a large part of the business, a significant part of the business appears to be built through acquisitions done over the last two, three years. Um, and you spoke about that this company is in a space of high uh, growth <coughs> SAP cloud implementation. 
Uh, but when I say I look at the revenue which we have disclosed over the last two years, the revenue CUGR appears to be about 11%, uh, within which there is a large acquisition as well. Uh, so how do you see this company operating and, and uh, are all those acquisitions already well integrated and no risk uh, is coming from execution of integration of the, those acquisitions done by, the, by Rising? Ajahn, would you like to take this question? Thank you. Yes, I can take that. And Jatin, I hope this line is clear. Yes, sir, it's better. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, it is true that company has had several acquisitions over the last five to seven years, but they have not made so many acquisitions over the last two to three years. Uh, they've had, uh, they made one very big acquisition of a company called Acune. Uh, most of the other acquisitions are fully integrated, and Attune is more or less integrated with uh, the core business. And Attune has had very good recovery post-pandemic. As you know, fashion and retail was the most impacted business during the pandemic. But now as we come out of pandemic, those industries are seeing very good recovery. So we are quite confident of both uh, the quality of the asset and the quality of the recovery that we will see. This business will operate uh, under the application and data business that we have adjacent to our SAP business. The idea is that we will drive synergies between rising and the first existing SAP business and go to market. We'll continue to serve existing clients of rising and look for cross-sell opportunities for Wipro uh, in those accounts. And we'll also look at existing clients of SAP and lead with consulting that uh, rising brings to the table. Um, thank you for that. Uh, my both uh, outlook guidance which we have given. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Rakesh. Your voice is, uh, was breaking, Ashley. I would request you to repeat your question. Sorry, yeah. Is this better now? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my second question was about the growth outlook which we have given, 1% to 3%. Uh, assuming that we hit about mid um, midpoint of that through the year, uh, we could at best be doing about 10 11% of growth in the full year in FI23. Well, it would be a double digit, but it would be a far a higher slowdown in growth from FI22 level compared to where the industry is likely to be. So how are you seeing the growth panning out through the year? Are you expecting the growth to further accelerate post the first quarter or that the conclusion which I'm making is broadly correct? Uh, so, uh, Rakesh, uh, this is Jatin. Uh, you know, I'll start and I'll request Thierry to add on. See, we are, we are suggesting that the growth is going to be double digit, and double digit doesn't end uh, on a number. It starts on, on 10. Uh, uh, what I want to highlight is, you know, we have grown six quarters at a 3 percentage plus, uh, and that is a track record that we have as we enter this, this year. Uh, we have given a one to three percent guidance, and you know uh, this is the natural rhythm of the business, and no business will will consistently grow at one per, one specific percentage. There will be certain quarters which would be faster, certain quarters which which will be slower, and uh, we have to uh, uh, retain that realization. And what we see, we guide uh, for quarter one accordingly. It's it's neither conservative nor any other way that, uh, that we have changed our, our guidance time. Uh, if, I can, if I can add to what uh, Jiatin said, I would say that, you know, yes, we are, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the reality is that, you know, it, it continues to be a, a solid growth for now seven quarters. Uh, and, and, you know, one to three is the level where we feel we are comfortable uh, for Q1. Uh, the pipeline is solid. Uh, the, uh, based on the quality of our bookings over the last two, I, I, I should even go, you know, uh, beyond, but of the last quarters has been really strong as well. So that's what gives us the feeling and the confidence as we are starting the year that we will uh, certainly uh, 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 be able to deliver double digit growth. As Jatin said, you know, more to come. Uh, until uh, you know more to come over the next uh, quarters for sure, but I think uh, this is with confidence that we are starting the year uh, 23 
going to be another year of uh, nice growth for Wipro. Thank you, Teddy. Thank you, Jatin, for that. I have more questions, but I'll let others ask question. I'll fall back on the queue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Menon from Acquiry. Please go ahead. Hi, right, thank you for the opportunity, gentlemen. Uh, so just a clarification on the guidance. Uh, so, you know, uh, we've heard that uh, this year the normal Q3 to Q4 season after did not quite play out. Uh, typically, Q4 has slightly higher working days due to higher holidays in Q3. Uh, and Q1 should therefore definitely have uh, more working days uh, than Q4. But that doesn't seem to be coming through. And in a point in that environment, uh, you know, is this something to do with? Uh, say the deal anniversary metro. What had been should be thinking about uh, when we, uh, you know, another of those factors. Ravi, this is Thierry. I, I hope I will respond to your question. Your your, your voice was not um, uh, always clear, but I understand what we are trying to understand is uh, the nature of this guidance uh, in the seasonality. You know, what I would I would recommend is look at the seasonality quarter after quarter the sequence show growth of you know five or six of our competitors and us uh, in the last six quarters and you will see that we are probably if not the only one one of the only one to have been consistently above three percent every quarter and the reality is that because of the nature of a contract one day or you know, uh, uh, the, the size of, uh, uh, you know, an opportunity or deal, you have some quarters a little more, some quarters a little less. I don't think that you should read anything material or kind of a trend between a guidance like the one we've given in the previous quarter and this one. I think we are still talking about growth, and I think we keep the same level of confidence that what we had in mind uh, several quarters ago, again. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate that clarification. Uh, secondly, I want to ask you about the acquisitions. Um, we've done Capco, the beast of the SSI. Now with rising, we've got retail, uh, and you know we've got agile to uh, before cyber security. Uh, do you think that you know we should see this as pretty much a loss for the large acquisitions, or do you think there is a need uh, to fill out certain gaps in the service portfolio? Right. Okay. Excellent question, uh, uh, Ravi. Frankly, the if you look at the acquisitions, I'll tell you first, I reflect on the acquisitions we made, and then I'll, I'll give a, a view going forward. If you look at the acquisitions we have made uh, over the last two years, they have all in common a strategic nature. The, deal, the deals we've made are strategic. What, I'm, what I mean is that we are not acquiring volume. We are not going for the sake of you know, acquiring uh, a, a, a sizable business that will bring a scale. No, we are not doing that. We can. We are looking at companies that have a strong brand, not necessarily large companies, but companies that have a strong brand and bring a true domain expertise or a true um, ability to um, drive transformational deals. If you look at, you know, Agile, uh, that was a consulting business in security that is reinforcing and, and enhancing our, you know, security practice very, very, very successfully. If you look at Capco, it's the best example. By the way, I just want to celebrate here with you uh, our first year anniversary of the acquisition of Capco exactly a year ago. Um, frankly, Capco um, is a very strong brand, and uh, we've uh, had the opportunity to realize, um, you know, the, 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 the potential and the power and the quality of the talent uh, of this team. Uh, we have been able to deliver, to create together between the Capco and the Wipro teams as many as 60 synergy deals over the last one year. Capco has performed extremely well under Lens Navy leadership in the last one year. And, uh, you know, I, I must say, uh, this idea of combining our strong BFSI business with a uh, large consulting practice like Capco um, was the right thing to do. 
and I think we are uh, pleased uh, at the time we are celebrating this anniversary. If you look at CAS and rising now, the deal we just announced a few days ago, CAS, you could look at it as a, a small capital. It's more or less the same strategy, which is to say, you know, adding a consulting comp practice uh, that has a particular strength in a given sector, in the ca case of chaos gas, uh, in the communication sector. And already now, we have uh, opportunities, uh, uh, our teams from CAS and from Wipro, if I can say, are working together on uh, some uh, deals with clients. So it's getting immediate traction. And then we have a, a very nice and solid SAP practice, but we didn't have real consulting capabilities. Rising brings just that. So again, again an example of an acquisition that is strategic in nature because it allows us to have a different kind of discussion with our clients and have allow us to go for more transformational deals than what we would typically go for before. So those are, um, that's what we've done so far and that's what we will continue to do. So don't, um, we do not have a number to reach. We don't have a number to reach. We don't have a particular target. It's not like, you know, we want to close a deal every now and then. But we look at what is, what kind of opportunities we see and what kind of deal. If there is a solid case for a strategic move in one of our frames of sectors, we'll continue to look at it. I, you know, I cannot better answer than to your question than like that. Thank you so much for all the time for getting there. Uh, uh, great. Uh, one last uh, you know, kind of bookkeeping question. Uh, you spoke about engineering services and really fast growth there. Uh, could you share what's the rough prop proportion of our revenue that engineering services contributes to me? What percent of the revenue coming from engineering services? Yeah. Want to go? Yeah. Uh, Ravi, let me come back to this question. We have not disclosed it, but, but let me just check. I'll come back. Sure. Thanks. So what I can tell you is engineering, all I can say is engineering services is actually a significant uh, practice for us. It's, 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 it's gaining real scale. I think we are now one of the global players uh, in engineering services. And I'm very pleased with the growth I've seen in that space over the last uh, quarters. And we continue to accelerate. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I'll step back into the queue. Agreed, we can go with the next question and we'll come back to Ravi's question after this question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Rateria from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for taking my question. I have two questions for uh, Thierry and one for Jatin. Uh, Thierry, so while ACV growth was quite strong, the TCV of large deal win was soft on a quarter and quarter basis. Uh, how much of that has a rub-off effect in the near-term performance? Was that one of the factors that kind of drove your guidance to one to three versus the trajectory of two to four in the last two quarters? Well, you know, this is, uh, you know, I've always said that, you know, the, uh, you know, going after large is, is a, you know, uh, strategy. It's an important uh, priority for us, and we are gearing up to, uh, and we are, we have a nice pipeline. We have a lot of good opportunities. We have deals that, you know, we could expect to close in the next few quarters, and so we are on it. And, 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 and you know, I have zero doubt that that will trigger some uh, some some nice some nice deals. I see it as being as coming on top of you know the sales activity that we drive quarter after quarter. If you look at the performance in sales of the last quarters, it's been strong. So it's actually been strong, but coming from you know, smaller uh, or mid-sized type of deals. We have also some large deals, but, you know, as you have seen, uh, less this quarter than, than other. Now, you know, we, we also see that some of these deals are coming in chunks, okay? So sometimes clients are just not comfortable to go for, you know, lengthy uh, commercial discussion and prefer to uh, split the deals in different chunks and get us to start uh, a phase uh, rather than uh, going uh, through uh, this long process. So that's 
that's also a fact that we are observing. Um, but but absolutely, you know, uh, our our objective is to continue to get and and, and get some of these large yields uh, uh, in the next quarters. Okay. Second question is on some of these strategic acquisitions that you have made. Uh, it looks like all of them are, some of them are running independently while you have integrated the uh, go-to-market. So uh, when do you really think the integration is really fully over? How do you bring it all together as one repro, not just in front of clients, but also in terms of the organization structure as one consulting organization? Oh, God, a couple of points on, on that. Uh, one, we have integrated a lot of the companies we've acquired, uh, and they are and, and they are uh, uh, in the they are now completely part of the Wipro uh, family. H however, when we talk about integration, it doesn't mean we are merging them and 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 completely, you know, uh, 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 removing the brand and so on. In the case of Capco, for example, it's a strong brand, and, and we really want to retain this brand, at least for the foreseeable future, because it's highly recognized in the market. Second, Capco is a consulting practice. So, you know, we have a consulting practice inside Wipro, and the objective is to combine those two cons con consulting practices. But the objective is not to merge the consulting practice with you know, a technology practice. Those are different families. And we are managing inside Wipro with different families, right? I'll, get, I'll take another example. Design it. It's completely integrated now in organization. However, because it's also a different family, highly creative, we are keeping a different brand, and and they are, you know, a, 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 the, the, the capabilities, if you like, the talent, the people are in one practice. So again, they are the integration. It means integration of systems, integration of you know processes, legal uh, offices, and so on. Those things are not necessarily. Uh, those things are absolutely uh, uh, done, but it doesn't mean that necessarily the the brand disappears or that we are merging completely this team into our teams. We maintain the logic of families because a consulting team. Is not the same as a technology team. Is not the same that a, deal, a digital operations team. Is not the same than creative teams or engineering teams. Thank you, the, thank you for the elaborate answer. Uh, one question for Jatin: uh, What is the flexibility we are allowing ourselves to invest and manage supply side challenges in the near term, and how should one think about consolidation of rising? with respect to impact on margins, uh, uh, both with respect to the amortization schedule or any integration-related costs, uh, any any uh, particular guidance there will be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I, I didn't follow your last line very clearly, Gaurav, so can you repeat the, the question? Yeah, so the question was, what is the flexibility we are allowing ourselves to invest in managed supply side challenges in the near term? And how should one think about consolidation of the rising and uh, potential impact on margin due to amortization or any integration related costs? So, uh, so Baru, we are, uh, you know, we, we have stated that our, while we remain confident about the the corridor of margin that we have disclosed before, and we have always talked about it in midterm. For next two, three quarter, our margins would be slightly lower, and that is really the flexibility that we are retaining. Uh, the growth is 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 absolutely front and central uh, to our uh, to our strategy and out to our execution as we look at FI23, and therefore we will have to remain focused on on making sure that we are doing everything. To, to to deliver an excellent growth trajectory. So we will we have retained that flexibility in, in the commentary we have made or the way we have planned our year. Uh, to to your second question on a financial integration uh, or financial consolidation of rising and the relative impact on the on the margins, it's difficult to call out at this juncture exactly, but you know you could take a proxy of our previous 
uh, amortization uh, range as as a percentage of uh, of the purchase price we are paying, and I think that would be ballpark. Uh, an accurate number for you to assess, and their profitability is very similar to an on-site consulting firm. Uh, in, uh, a good on-site consulting firm will will deliver on a on a consistent basis. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pankaj Kapoor from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the outlook that you see for the Capco business specifically, uh, given the current uh, uh, macro headwind that we see in, in Europe. Uh, so how, what kind of a pipeline uh, or what kind of a deal activity do you see for Capco? Uh, is there any risk, especially on the financial services side, which is leading to any elongation in decision-making from the clients? Cash theory here. Um, so, you know, by definition, Capco has, you know, being a consulting uh, business, has a uh, shorter, um, you know, cycle, if you like, and therefore, you know, the visibility typically you would have on a business like this is, uh, you know, not not in quarters, right? A uh, few quarters. However, however, I would say um, the business continue to be very strong very strong. In fact, I was just trading some, some messages with Lance and, you know, the, the, the outlook continues to be, uh, to be really solid. I think um, this, this company, because of its impact and the ability to help, you know, bank and financial institution and insurance to, uh, to drive transformation uh, programs, you know, they are, they are really helping those, those companies to improve their productivity and address some of their efficiency the challenges, and I think you know the visibility we have on the pipeline. Pipeline is strong. If I look at the bookings for the quarter four, I think it's been the biggest ever they've done. Um, so you know, uh, based on where where we are now, uh, it's looking good. It's really looking good for Capco. Not um, not worried. Okay, that's yeah. helpful. And the uh, second. Yeah, Pankaj, I just wanted to add one thing because you, you, you were referring to the European market and indeed there's a significant part of the business of Capco in Europe. So I would say the mix of Capco between Europe and America is, you know, is significant, but the one of we pro is as well. Um, so here I, I tend to be a little bit careful because, you know, a situation, a, a macro situation like the war is something that can evolve in, uh, and no one knows, right, what, what it's, you know, what, what can unfold. Based on what we are seeing today, looking at the pipeline or talking to our clients, no signs of slowdown either, right? So we stay close to it. We talk constantly to our clients. But today, no real sign of slowdown. Over to you. I understand. Uh, Kiri, the other question is on your large deal wins, uh, just persisting there. Uh, uh, so we, it's almost four quarters since we announced a major deal win. And I understand that these deals are, are cyclical and it is very difficult to predict the timelines. But four quarter is a reasonable uh, time frame to look at the success of how our large deal strategy is working. So just curious to know that, A, uh, on the large deal front, uh, what is your initial sense? Is, is there a kind of a calibration that you need to make midway to make it more effective? And the second part is that, uh, unfortunately, since you only disclose deals which are which are upward of $30 million, uh, it clouds our, our optically uh, sense of what kind of order book that you have. But how do I look at your overall order book? If you can share some quantitative or a qualitative commentary in terms of how that has grown on a TCV way. Thank you. So let me let me address the second part, uh, which is the quality of the pipeline, and then I'll I'll hand it over to uh, Stephanie, who is uh, uh, sitting here next to me, uh, to uh, to talk about the the, the large deals. Um, the nature of the the quality of the the other book. One, um, about forty percent of our other book today is coming from cloud. It's cloud related. And that is more every quarter. 
And we like that because this is really where we get a lot of growth and where there's, you know, we know that the market is continues to, to, to expand. And so there's, you know, we, we know that this is a good quality of, of deals. Um, the growth we are seeing from a domain and consulting, the growth we are seeing from uh, engineering in particular continue to be very strong. So that is, that is promising. What's equally promising is the fact that um, about 50% of the deals we've closed in the quarter have been in, in um, partnership with some of our uh, larger partners, right? SAP, ServiceNow, AWS, Google, Microsoft, Salesforce. And those relations, you know, uh, have, have clearly changed in nature over the last months. You know, when I, when I hear that, you know, Bill McDermott is uh, mentioning our name in his earnings yesterday, it's something that, you know, wouldn't have happened necessarily several quarters ago. Same thing with Microsoft. Same thing with SAP, actually. So, so I think it's, it's a reflection of the fact that our order book is positioned in the, around the, the right um, uh, parts of the portfolio, if you like. Uh, the, we have been working actively on the rotation of our portfolio, and um, the, the performance in booking supports this rotation. On the large deals, Stephanie, over to you. Thanks, Thierry. Um, you know, we started building our large deal organization last year, and I'm pleased to tell you that it's fully in place and operational today, and everyone on the team has a robust pipeline of opportunities, and we're very excited about the pipeline that we are uh, working with going into 2023. We did have some very large deals uh, in 2022, but they didn't, they haven't materialized uh, as the clients, um, as Thierry mentioned, either decide to break them up and, and um, stage them or uh, are still in the midst of their decision making process and determining, you know, whether single partners or multi partner is the right solution for them. So I would say overall our strategy is working. Our teams are disciplined and on the ground. Um, we're putting the full might of one Wipro behind them to help them really differentiate. And uh, we're very optimistic about uh, what we'll see in 2023. Thank you. And just one last question to Jatin. Uh, Jatin, from a, a fully perspective, you think that the kind of investment that we are planning and the kind of wage pressures that you have in the first half, uh, do you think that the margins could be significantly at a risk uh, uh, in FY23 on overall year basis versus FY22? Thank you. Pankaj, uh, you know, difficult to uh, look into the future because we are also dealing with an external environment. But our commentary right now uh, very clearly is this, that uh, the margin corridor that we discussed before, we will be slightly lower than that uh, for next two, three quarters. That's the visibility right now, and I'll stick to it, and we'll continue to talk more about it as we see how, how, how the year progresses. Thank you, and wish you all the best. Thanks, Pankaj. Uh, Margaret, before we go to the next question, I will also address uh, Ravi's question. Uh, you know, we don't break it out, uh, the engineering spend, uh, engineering as a services uh, revenue of our aggregate, but, but uh, specifically for, for this question, you know, it is little over 10% of our revenues, and it has had a fabulous year. It has grown in healthy 20s. Uh, this year as a growth, and as Thierry mentioned in his commentary on engineering, it is it is a sector, that, it is an area where we remain very bullish. We are making all right investment in the space, and we are looking forward to another strong year for in FY23. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tipesh Mehta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I just have uh, one um, question. Sorry which to interrupt, more... Mr. Mehta. Your voice is very low. May I speak you? May I request you to come closer to the phone? Or speak is it better now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Better. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Uh, my question is broadly more about clarification. You indicated about double-digit revenue growth guidance for the year. Uh, is it organic or is it uh, acquisition close so far? How one should look at it? The, um, the uh, guidance we give for the growth is organic, right? So it's based on the 
on the situation we have, uh, you know, based on the perimeter on, on, on as of today, right? Actually, they, yeah. Based on the uh, equation we have closed so far, that's, uh, that is right understanding? It is right, Vipesh. Uh, you are accurately uh, in your assessment. It is all the acquisitions which are closed as of today. Uh, that's what we have counted, and therefore we have not counted rising, which is announced but not closed. Understand. Thanks. Uh, second question is about the margin, or slightly medium term rather than near term, which you indicated. Now, when we did Cape Co, we indicated our organic business will operate at 19 percentage and capco because of the amortization and transaction related costs would have 200 bips kind of impact and over a period of time this 200 bips impact will narrow down so and considering now we are one year in that journey and obviously supply side challenges have some implication in near term but how one should look uh, medium term margin trajectory for Wipro because acquisition is also part of growth story for us and integral part of revenue growth. Whether this 17 to 17 and a half is a good range to understand from medium term perspective or how one should uh, look Wipro's margin trajectory? So from a medium term standpoint, Dipesh, we believe today uh, that 17 to 17 and a half is a trajectory uh, that we would like to hit. Uh, yes, uh, your assessment is right that the, some of the amortization costs related with CAPCO would come down over the years, but not certainly in one year. At least uh, first few years we will we'll have that impact that we have spoken about. And that's how you should see it uh, uh, from a medium-term standpoint, as you mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of... Sandeep Shah from Equitas Securities. Please go ahead. Sandeep Shah from Equitas Securities. Yes, uh, thanks, thanks for... Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? We can. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, yes. Uh, so just six to seven months back, uh, we have issued a press release talking about a $1 billion investment for building cloud capabilities of which $70 million. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear Hi. you. Go ahead, Sandeep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we have released the press release uh, talking about $1 billion yeah, $1 billion worth of investments, of which $750 million would be in organic in building the cloud capabilities. So whether rising is a part of the $750 million plan, or this would be over and above that? No, so look, uh, rising is in the right space, and, and certainly it's part of, of our uh, cloud slash uh, consulting capabilities, and uh, that's how you should see it. Okay, okay, thanks. So that means uh, it's a part of it. Uh, and second question and last question is in the... Yeah. Second question, in terms of margin, so even after CAPCO, if I look at the fourth quarter margin over first quarter margin, at EBITDA level, there is close to a difference of 200 basis points, while at EBIT level, the difference is 70 to 80 basis point as a whole. So, and we are talking about a further decline in the next two, three quarters from the levels of fourth quarter as a whole. So, the question is, growth is turning around, but operating leverage is not coming. So, when do you expect that to come? Uh, uh, because FI23 could be a year where some of the hits on the margins are unlikely to be recovered uh, because of the higher wage hikes, uh, return to office, travel cost, and all that. So is it fair to assume that uh, FI24 could be the year of operating leverage as a whole for Wipro? So, when we, uh, let me first start by saying that you know we we, main, we shared a range and we operated always in that range or in fact a little higher for previous quarters until quarter four where we are in the range but at the, at the bottom end of the range. Uh, and uh, the second point is that the operating leverage uh, is coming through truly however you know uh, we are also investing additionally so it is not that uh, we are not being productive in the way we are spending money but we are actually 
uh, generating productivity and investing in the areas that we want to invest in. And, and Thierry spoke about some of those areas in his in his opening remarks. And and I don't see any different in FY23 also. Uh, only so to say external variable for all of us to watch out and not just us as company but as an industry is the continued pressure on talent and what we'll have to do in FY23 for that. For that, and we will. I mean, we will see how how FI23 therefore pans out. But we are very clear that we 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 on one hand drive efficiency that we can invest back as investment, and that's that's the whole uh, strategy has been in 22 and will continue to be in 23. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Aparna Ayer for closing comments. Thank you all for joining the call today. In case we couldn't take your questions, you can please feel free to reach out to the investor relations team and have a nice weekend uh, ahead.